unifying chants, blood red stains, and simple yet powerful signage. These images are popping up over and over as protesters around the world call for more freedoms in Iran and the downfall of Iran's government. But there is a lot more to it than what you see in videos. Here's a look at some of the history and symbolism behind these popular protest actions and slogans which continue to spread around the world. First, Zan Zendegi Azadi, Women, Life, Freedom. This phrase has been chanted at demonstrations since the death of Masa Amini. She's the young Iranian who died in police custody after allegedly disrespecting the Islamic Republic's strict dress code for women. Now, people are using it in hashtags and in all kinds of languages. But the most notable version is the Kurdish version. Jin Jian Azadi. That's because the slogan has Kurdish roots, and Amini, whose Kurdish name was Jina, was an ethnic Kurd. Ava Homa, a Kurdish-Iranian author, told me that the slogan traces back to the Kurdish freedom movement and the idea that a country can't be free until its women are free. It's been chanted by female Kurdish fighters. And she says it represents decades of resistance by Kurdish women against both state oppression and their own patriarchy. Now the slogan is appearing all over the world, and the fact that it has taken off across ethnicities and borders and religions is what analysts say makes this movement so strong. Then there's women's hair. In Iran, women aren't allowed to show their hair in public. Hair and the hijab, a hair covering, have been at the heart of the protests from the very beginning. Footage on social media shows women across Iran removing their hijabs and even cutting their hair off in public. Experts say there are a few key things to understand here. Part of this is about control. For decades, women in Iran have been subject to strict dress codes and restrictions on all kinds of activities. Iranian-American psychologist Tara Emrani says that by revealing and cutting their hair, women in Iran are making a statement that they are taking back control of their bodies and their lives. The act of defiance has caught on, and women around the world have been doing it in solidarity. Until the women of Iran are free, we are going to stand with you. Jian, Jian, Azadi, women, life, freedom. But there's a historical and mythological aspect of this too. History professor Abbas Amanat told me that it dates back thousands of years to a myth that was put into writing in the Shahnameh, the iconic Persian epic, which is kind of like Iran's Iliad and Odyssey. When one of the most iconic characters is killed, his wife cuts off her hair and ties it around her waist as a sign of struggle and mourning. She then goes on to avenge her husband's death. Some of the experts I talked to say there are a lot of parallels between that story and what's happening today. Women are cutting their hair to mourn a tragic loss and also to rise up and demand justice. And finally, there are references to blood everywhere. People have stained their hands, their faces, their clothing, and their signs in protest of the Iranian regime, which has cracked down hard on the demonstrators. But protesters aren't just suggesting that blood is on the hands of the regime. In Persian culture, blood is also a sign of martyrdom. For example, during the Iran-Iraq war, a fountain at a cemetery in Tehran was dyed red to memorialize the martyrs. After the death of Masa Amini, iconic fountains around Tehran were dyed red again, this time by an anonymous artist. Atlanta Council Iran specialist Holly Dogress tweeted, Today, the fountains were dyed because of the blood spilled by Iran's security forces. At a university, protesters with stained red hands gathered around another stained red fountain and sang an old Iranian song commemorating martyrs. Tulips have bloomed from the blood of the youth of the country. Holly told me they're singing that song to suggest that more protesters will rise up as more blood is shed. And as protesters marked the 40th day since Amini's death, they evoked blood to call for the overthrow of Iran's supreme leader, chanting, this is the year of blood. The Iranian government has blamed foreign enemies for fueling the protests and has warned young people not to go into the streets. So far, the government has charged hundreds of people in Iran with crimes in connection with the protests. 